fourth practice. We cut down to, I'm proud to say, two false starts today in about 90 plays, so that was a good thing. But just a lot of good work again, and uh, progress is being made, and the kids are adapting to the, you know, some of the, the changes that we've made, and uh, just uh, continue to move along in a positive manner. So I'm, I'm encouraged by what, what we're doing and where we're at. But a lot of work to do. How stepping up as a, as a leader for your team? Because uh, you guys lost some pretty good leaders. Yeah, you know, it's always interesting to watch guys emerge. Uh, and it really kind of starts when you start your winter program in the weight room. You know, guys that uh, have watched guys like EK or others, they kind of start to fill their shoes. Uh, some guys right off the bat, you know, that have been here, you know, Fabian, who was a captain last year, I mean, he continues to, you know, show the types of traits that you like to see in your leaders. Uh, Connor McDermott is certainly a, a, a person that everybody looks up to because of his work ethic, his attitude, the type of player he is, the type of person he is, his character. Uh, I think that Scott Quisenberry has natural leadership ability. I think Josh Rosen does. I think what you want is you want a whole bunch of leaders in your locker room that are kind of different. You know, different personalities, different styles. Some are loud and boisterous and some are quiet. But if you can get a whole group of guys moving in the same direction with, the, with whatever style that is, then, then you've got a chance to be pretty good. How is Asia's uh, transition going to receive? Well, after four practices, I think pretty smoothly. You know, you guys just talked to him, so you'd have a, a better feel for what he said than I have when I've talked to him, which is daily. You know, it's quick, and he, he seems excited about it. Um, we see good things. You know, we see a guy that can catch the ball on the flat or some, you know, like we talked about the other day, that shorter area quickness and make people miss and, and get vertical in a hurry. So, uh, and he's competitive and he's tough. And I think those are elements that you like to see offensively. He said to, it, was a, it would be a better question for you when we asked him how his routes were. So how are his routes right now? Well, he, he has uh, speed, quickness, and then Yarbs, Eric calls it drive phase. When he gets separation, he's able to put it in second gear or third gear or fourth gear and, and create separation. He can do that. I mean, he's always going to need to work on his routes. I mean, that's what great receivers do is they constantly refine their routes. But uh, I think he's well on his way to be a guy that can help us on that side of the ball. And, you know, I still think he has the ability to help us as a returner. And I think that if we need him, he still can play defense for us. So I think he'll be very valuable for us this year. How's little Kenny to a load? He Got some time with the ones today, it seemed like. Very impressed. You know, really impressed with all the, the guys that have come in early. But look, Kenny, he had the interception. Nice yeah. play. Uh, you know, he wears a linebacker number 52. He just looks like a middle linebacker. He kind of looks like a throwback middle linebacker. I think he's very smart. He's very calm. Uh, he has football instincts and awareness and, and, uh, and toughness. And the game doesn't seem, you know, it's kind of a cliche. You know, the game doesn't seem too big for him. You know, he doesn't ever seem overwhelmed by anything. And I'm really encouraged by the way he's looked, by the way Mikke's looked, by the way Breland's looked. You know, those three linebackers, it's a tough position to adapt to at this level, and they're doing a nice job. Marcus Rios was on the sideline today. Is he okay? He just he strained his groin a little bit on Saturday, but it's nothing serious. He missed today. I'm not sure where, if he'll be out here Tuesday or not, but it's it's really nothing to worry about. This is how Manfro and Sharp and Dwight? Um, Stephen Manfro uh, hurt his shoulder again, and he's being evaluated by the doctors tonight, and then we'll make a decision on his future. Uh, and I'm not sure which way that's going to go. You know, hopefully, uh, he'll be able to be out here with us, but you know, he's been through a lot. So it wouldn't surprise me if you know, we've seen the last of him. Hopefully, we have. And if we have, it'll, you know, it'll be sad and thank him for everything he's done. And, you know, but we'll see. Um, who are the other ones you asked? Sharp and Dwight and Sharp. Dwight Williams is no longer with the program. And Aaron Sharp had a, uh, a class issue that he had to take care of. So no big deal there, at least not right now. So. Are you expecting to get any of the guys who were on the Tour de France over there back? <laughs> um, Yeti, no. Tavita, probably not. Fabian, no. Mossy, no. Who else would have been over there? Uh, Johnny. Johnny, no. Those are all guys, you know, I mean, we could probably push Fabian to get out here for the last week, but I, I don't think it's worth it. He's coming off a Liz Frank injury, and I'd rather that than heal. He's a, you know, he's a fifth-year senior. So, uh, you know, I just don't think the benefits are enough to warrant the risk. When he does come back in fall, does that affect Randall go for it? Does he kind of shift back to safety or you're in shape? Um, I don't know. You know, we'll see. I mean, we're going to try to play the four best and play them consistently, the five best when we're in nickel. And, you know, Randall's a playmaker. 
I think it benefits him right now to play corner. I mean, he's really he knows the safe position well and is a good safety, but just working on his cover skills will help us, help him. So uh, that's a good question. I don't have the answer to that question yet. I mean, we'll see when we get there. What have you seen from Adarius Pickett that made him plug in with the ones? Intelligence. We always knew he was a really smart kid, but now just you see that football intelligence. Uh, I think he's tough. I mean, we've all you know seen the toughness. He's, he has that kind of that running back mentality where he's taking it to people. Uh, he has a knack for, for being around the ball. And he's starting to really get an understanding of how to play safety, like where he's supposed to fit in the run game, and what his pass drops are, and things like that. And he's displaying a high level of confidence. So we're, we're excited about him. We're excited about Tahan. You know, I think Tahan has made some really good plays over the course of the first four days. Jaleel, same thing. So uh, I'm just very encouraged about the way things have gone for four days. It's a different kind of practice than you guys have seen for four years. You know, we've slowed the tempo down. There's a lot more teaching. And, uh, and as we go through spring, you'll see the temple pick up a lot, but not to the point where it's frantic. You know, it's just an important time for us to just really, to really concentrate on the fundamentals and techniques and things like that. How was it to have all the ex-players out here? It was awesome. I mean, you know, to see Eric Kendricks grab Jayon Brown on the sideline after nine on seven and talk about some things and run fits, because that's what he was doing. You know, Jayon goes right, he talks to Scotty, but he goes to EK, what did you see? You know, because no one can talk it quite like an ex-player can, especially a guy like Eric, who's you know, an NFL guy. Or to see uh, Anthony Barr being able to interact with Keyshawn Lee Sal, you know, uh, and those are just two examples. It's just, you know, it's it's a real benefit to our guys because those are the guys that, that that our young men look up to. You know, they're doing what our guys aspire to do, which is having success in the NFL. So having them out here is great, and then and then the older guys too. You know, and I, I told the players coming off the field, go. Oh, meet those guys and honor them. I mean, they paved the way for you and they're guys that can offer you advice just not only on the field, but off the field as well. So it was great. I mean, I heard that Altron was here and MJD was here and Mercedes was here. I haven't seen those guys yet. I'll go see them now, but it's just really cool to have them around. Love it. Absolutely love it. So, Coach, okay. Uh, yeah. What would you want your players to uh, take away from spring practices? Um, a sense of uh, confidence in their technique and an understanding of our scheme how we want to do things and uh, you know a, a sense of uh, accomplishment that you know that we're moving towards our goal things like that you know we want to come out of here you know feeling like we're on the on the, the right path and I think so far we are this is off of football off of football what do you think about Kobe's retirement or like what he's brought to LA <laughs> this 20 seasons I, I'm, I'm not uh, I'm not a, a, a big Big NBA basketball fan. Okay. So I, I don't, I mean, I respect Kobe, but I don't really follow NBA basketball. I understand. I'm a college basketball fan. There you go. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. So. All right. Thanks, guys. Okay. Thanks. Thank you, Coach.